Medal of Honor is one of the granddaddy first person shooter franchises out there. It has a legendary status amongst many people, despite its last few releases being quite disappointing. So I thought we should take a look back at what is probably considered its most finest title, Allied Assault, and see how good this game is and how ultimately it would change the course of gaming history. If you didn't know, Medal of Honor was created by DreamWorks Interactive, which was a joint venture between DreamWorks and Microsoft, the very same DreamWorks that Steven Spielberg founded. After releasing Saving Private Ryan, he wanted to create a World War II game that would be both educational and entertaining. However, after the first two Medal of Honor titles, DreamWorks Interactive would be sold to EA, but with Spielberg still attached to its third title, Allied Assault. With a game that would change gaming history, I thought we should take a look back at this game and see how well it plays today. What does it do good and what does it do badly? So we're getting started with the first mission of the campaign, which is in North Africa and not, you know, D-Day. A lot of people remember D-Day from Allied Assault, but here we are in North Africa and we're joined by this squad here. We need to rescue a POW and then blow up some stuff. Now, it's funny how this truck is so open at the back because we're not exactly hidden at all. It's kind of funny, really. It was probably like a limitation back in the day, but they could have just had some flaps covering the back a bit and you just peering out, but then you probably wouldn't be able to get to see all this stuff happening here. But of course, it kicks off. They get blown up. Rip for those guys. Now we can actually taste our first bit of combat in Allied Assault. And playing this, the first thing you'll realize is that it doesn't have ADS. This was like back in the day before they actually had ADS. And I actually like that little touch they put in there where when you're with any soldiers, they actually tell you when they die, which is a nice little touch. And then we head into this little village. Combat in like close quarters for Allied Assault, I think this is like the best part of the combat, not the long range stuff. And when you're going through this village and actually fighting with these guys, like they can actually do stuff and they can actually kill people pretty well unlike any modern day shooter where your AI like companions that are with you just are there to do nothing but we get ambushed and we need to fight it off we use this MG42 and the MG42 this little turret section you'll find that there's quite a few throughout the campaign and they're not that well done. This is probably the one of the better ones because the enemies can actually come from multiple directions. But our entire squad just gets killed. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I don't know if they can be saved or not. And then we fight our way through further into the compound to find this guy we need to rescue. And this guy we rescue has probably got to have the least British sounding name I can think of. He's called Jack Grillo. I mean, Jack's eh, kind of British, but Grillo? Nah, mate. But playing this game so far, it is like pretty good. I completely miss here what Grillo says here. He says, don't shoot the lights because it will alert them. And then I just went ahead and shot the lights. And then I just let him get hosed by an MG42. But there's a nice little touch here because when he starts moving, he starts limping. And because he just got hosed by the MG42, it looks like he can actually die like the other AI soldiers I had. And another good thing here is uh, he actually heals himself. He uses a healing item that is found within the level and he just heals himself of it. Why can't more games do that? I don't think I've really seen any other shooters do that, where your AI soldiers will use healing items from the environment to heal themselves with. That's a like a really good little touch. We fight our way further into the compound and find another POW. We rescue that geezer. Job done. Plant some explosives at this gate and Grillo, ever the badass, just doesn't care about explosions. But what that bit there got me thinking about is that if he was really low on health and he stood too close to that gate when the explosion went off, 
he could have died. And then that would have lost like the players in like an endless loop of him spawning in or loading the quick save and dying from the explosion. But we fight our way in. Now we have to go into this compound and do some extra stuff. We need to disable some trucks and blow up some tanks. Off I go then. And uh, here are the trucks. I mean, the red wire is painfully obvious to us to disable the tanks, but I think it would be pretty noticeable for the Germans to see that the trucks have been disabled. But, you know, it's a video game. But so far, you know, the game, it is pretty fun. While this is only the first level, the combat is pretty decent. There's no ADS, which is a bit weird, you know, considering that's what we're used to in pretty much every game nowadays but it's good it's pretty fast frantic and yeah it's just pretty decent but we blow up the tanks get the objectives done and we just need to fight off these guys before we can escape further on into the level and once we've done that jack arrives to the rescue in his little jeep and we get a taste of like another turret section but on the back of this jeep i think it's the only one in the game where you're actually being driven around with like a turret section but it's you know it's a standard really turret section there's nothing really to shout out about you have to get driven to this airfield and there's a bunch of planes that are parked up that you gotta destroy it's just a bit meh really it's not really a uh, big set piece Once that's done, we have to go through this little bunker to carry on the level. We need to fight our way through this extra bunker, destroy this comm equipment. And these close quarter combat sections so far, and like I said earlier, it's definitely where the combat shines because the weapons, they're not like fully accurate, especially the automatic ones. While the M1 Garand is really accurate, the SMGs and other automatic weapons you get later on in the game, they're not like 100% accurate for their first shot. If you go into the tutorial before you go into the main game, you find that the automatic weapons are really inaccurate. So for a lot of the beginning of the game, I did stick to the M1 until I got to these close quarter situations, but maybe it was just like a, a sign of the times. But that mission's done, and now we're on to mission two. And this mission just instantly reminds me of that snow mission from GoldenEye. I can't quite remember the name. It might be Siberia. And it's our first chance of using like, a sniper rifle as well. And a sniper rifle. Yeah, it's good. It works as it should do. And um, I'm glad Friendly Fire wasn't on for this section because that guy who just tried to shoot in the head was actually a friendly. <laughs> a friendly that would eventually open this gate for us. So here he is, taking like the longest time you possibly can to open this gate, and this German soldier that appears, I think is meant to shoot him and kill him, but I kill the German soldier, and then this guy just decides to, to die in a really dramatic way. And with this snow mission is, I think, where the game starts to get a little bit more challenging, because the accuracy of the enemies, especially the enemies that use the bolt-action rifle, the Car 98, they are extremely accurate. And these dogs can be really annoying sometimes. One also thing you should try and listen out to throughout the game is the music. The music for Medal of Honor Allied Assault is that pure cinematic orchestral music. It's top quality throughout the entire game. And now it's time for really a pure traditional Medal of Honor level where got to sneak into a base we did get an enemy uniform and now we've got papers the papers you've got to show to anyone who wants to see them like this guy right here and i think this style of mission is in every medal of honor game apart from the two sort of reboot modern day set ones and it is like a good addition to the medal of honor games because it adds that extra variation of gameplay that like you can go and try and do it a bit stealthy. But even though at this point I just gun down everyone, you can still carry on. So you do have this choice between going in, trying to be super stealthy, 
or you can still just go in guns blazing. A lot of games, when they have a stealth section, you can fail the stealth section, get detected, and it's game over. But in Allied Assault, no, nah, it just keeps on going. It's just a little bit more difficult, I guess you could say, because now you've got to gun your way through, you've got to stop the alarms so reinforcements stop. It's a great thing, and I think forced stealth sections in games are a bit stupid, really. But our ultimate goal on this level is to get further and further into the base. I've kind of given up on the stealth at this point. We need to get further in to find a U-boat and destroy it. And here's the U-boat. And really, I think this guy asking for papers here is pretty much like a check. Do you want to try and do it stealthily? Or just go in guns blazing. And I want to try and do it stealthily. But you still need to get your hands dirty a little bit. So we get some upgraded papers from this guy. So we can get a little bit further into the base. And sneak directly onto the U-boat. Or into the U-boat itself. Because we do need to plant a couple of bomb charges in there. And I also grab a manifest inside it. I'm not sure if that was part of the main mission. But I grabbed it anyway. And I think it's a shame that this submarine wasn't used a bit more. While it is just a really tiny cramped part of a level. I mean, submarines are cramped anyway. But it would have been good if it was used a bit more instead of just something to quickly get in, plant some charges, and get out. And again, back with some more like close quarters combat. The game excels at it. Even though there's no iron sight in, it still really works well. Just hip firing everything. I think you can call it hip firing, even though it's just the default method of shooting every weapon in the game and if you are thinking of really picking up allied assault you can play it technically for free through game pass because you get the ea plus or ea play subscription the basic one automatic through it but through ea the game just failed to launch every single time so i ended up getting the game through gog.com or goodoldgames.com so i'd recommend checking them out the game is cheap it's like under ten dollars or it is ten dollars so it is definitely worth it and while this is only the second level i've played through the entire game so i would say it is worth it it is still a good game but of course it's not as polished or flashy as more recent world war ii games that we've had and at the end of this level it's just a mad dash to the train you do get a little timer in the top left to say you've got x amount of seconds left so i just decided screw it i'm just gonna run i'm gonna get shot out i've got some friendly soldiers on that train taking shots anyway and because i know they can actually kill people in this game unlike other shooters like call of duty screw it i'm just running we do make it onto the train and so yeah level two has been pretty good but now it's the big one Welcome to D-Day. Now, this might not look as good as you remember. It definitely, for me, doesn't look as good as what I thought it used to. I mean, you can't even see the beach. 
and I do have the graphics on Max and the black lines you can see in the skybox. I think that's just an issue of playing older games on modern hardware. But that opening bit with the boats, really good. It really tries to ramp up the tension. Of course, there's like the callback to Saving Private Ryan with the whole 30 seconds, but that's something they've probably said anyway. But now we're on the beach and yeah, it definitely feels better. But because you cannot see the beach, you cannot see the MG42 that's actually shooting at you. You do just see these bullet trails almost like appearing out of midair. So it takes away from it a bit. I mean, it is just a limitation of what they could probably do back in the day. But I think it gets the whole thing of D-Day across really well. And it's still pretty good, but I'm pretty sure that more modern titles have done D-Day a lot better. And that might be something I, I take a look at in another video. Play in D-Day in various games to see which game does D-Day the best. So we blew up the shingles, run through, look at my health, I'm only on 17 health right now. I'm hoping that this medic makes it through as well because he has been healing me, but nah, we're stuck with three health. And there are moments like this where you have AI soldiers speaking to each other and actually doing something together. It's quite rare in this game, it's usually just you by yourself and I think they should have done little moments like this a lot more and of course this is another callback to saving private Ryan so we try to cover these two guys as they run through there's mines set up along here as well they don't make it and yeah neither do I I don't even get a chance but this moment for me was incredibly frustrating you have to run into these different Craters, use the sniper rifle, use whatever weapon you can to take out the two MG42s that keep respawning people in and then make it past the mines and I just don't. When I get past the craters I sometimes run into the mines because there's very specific way or there is a very specific way you've got to make it through like run through the mines it's just not very clear and I do have to admit something I mean you can see my health is full I uh, instead of replaying the whole mission I, <laughs> I started to use a full health cheat at this checkpoint just so I can make it across and I still don't <laughs> manage to make it bloody hell it's just super frustrating <laughs> it's funny looking back at it and this one time I think I've made it the mine gets me and then it gets me and then it gets me but eventually yeah so uh, I eventually made it through <laughs> but it did take a hell of a long time and yeah I uh I did have to cheat to fully heal myself. But we get through, we're in the bunkers, clearing out the rest of the Germans. We need to clear Omaha Beach. And like I've said earlier, and I'll probably say a few more times, this close combat in Medal of Honor, it does it really well. This section here, I mean, again, it's like a little MG42 turret section. I'm pretty sure you don't actually have to do this one. But it's a strange place to put an MG42 because I'm pretty sure it can't actually aim down towards the beach so it's pretty much set up just like just so you can kill <laughs> the other bunker and anyone else outside but we clear out the Germans from the bunker and it's on to the next mission welcome to Bockage I think it's pronounced Bockage anyway and I think this mission has a really strong opening you team up with this one guy to clear out Germans from this house because there might be some 101st members here. Turns out there is and we rescue them but this mission I think it does have like a big dip in quality because once you've done this you rescue the guys upstairs in the house despite there being some good like close quarters combat which I've said before and I'm gonna say probably a few more times this good close quarters combat in this game it then 
changes the mission a little bit. You need to because once you've got the 101st guys rescued, here they are, you get attacked from Germans on both sides of the house. You need to defend it. On one side of the house, it's more of like a, a sniper fest. You gotta kill the guys running at you. It's almost like a little board mode sort of section, I guess you could say. It doesn't tell you if there's any waves remaining, just keep killing them, run to the opposite side of the house, and then a really bad, boring MG42 section. The enemies can only spawn on the left or the right, and this section goes on for far too long. And once that's done, you then have to do these like long runs down these long roads, and there's a couple of enemies here and there, but it's a very uninteresting part of the mission. And once you get further in, you get to some sections where there's these German soldiers that have got like 100% accuracy and they're nearly invisible in these bushes. It's another really frustrating part. I mean, there's a guy in that bush right in front of me and I can't even see him. I thought he was in this house. Maybe my ears weren't working at the time, but it was a frustrating moment. And there's quite a few moments like that actually throughout the game where you have these Germans hiding in bushes and they're extremely accurate with their bolt rifles. But we get through it, we take them out, that's done. And the next section is really ripped straight from Saving Private Ryan. You got this little radar installation, there's an MG42, there's some little craters. You've got to go up and take it out. And of course it is very reminiscent of that moment from Saving Private Ryan where the medic ends up dying. I've just forgot what the medic's name is. But it really reminds me of that. Of course, it's on like a less, like not as of a grander scale or grand scale as Saving Private Ryan because of the, you know, the age of the game and the limitations of what they could do back then. But it's a decent little section. But then again, what I said earlier about how this mission is a bit of a drop in quality. There's another turret section. And this section, again, they can only come from the left. So you're just there, like, aiming the MG42 on the left, waiting for people to appear. It's not a good section. It really felt like padding. But we carry on through the mission. We've got a couple of guys with us now, which is good. I think the game plays better when it's close quarters and you have a squad or some AI with you. Just because you can hear that extra battle chatter and stuff going on, it makes the game feel less like you're a one-man army and more like it's an actual World War II shooter where you work together with squads and you fight through this small town again you have AI with you and the AI can actually kill people we come to this section where there's a tiger tank and earlier in the mission you could get a bazooka and I used that bazooka already I've only got two shots left in this bazooka at this point and each bazooka or well, Panzer Shrek we should say deals 20% damage to the tiger tank there's no other way of dealing damage to it. So really, I've just got to leave my squad behind <laughs> and that's what I do. There's no objective to actually destroy the Tiger Tank in this mission. It's just a little extra thing. So I leave them behind, they can, they can just deal with it. Next is a set piece for the mission where you have to destroy a number of Nebelwerfer. Nebelwerfer? I probably said that wrong but this section unfortunately is a little bit tedious i mean ignore the sky boxes you're gonna get issues like that in a lot of old games that you play on modern systems i don't know the technical reason why that happens it's just it's just one of those things you are gonna have issues with some older games some older games just flat out won't work thankfully allied assault does on this you gotta push up plant charges on these artillery pieces to destroy them but because there's very little cover when you've got to move up to the second two artillery pieces, or second three, or second three, the other artillery pieces, again, it's just like this tedious section. You've got to run along, just keep an eye out for any of the infinite spawn Germans that may man the MG42s. You can't run straight to them because there was a little minefield. 
But you get into the bunker, get into this little trench system, and then you can make your way to them and actually destroy them. And again, because of the close quarters combat, this little moment here is a lot better than the lead up to that moment of fighting in the open areas. We plant the charges on them, destroy one. I nearly kill a friendly here, but then the other friendly you just saw died in the explosion. <laughs> There's a couple of times now that the friendly AIs just, what are they doing? <laughs> they have no awareness of explosions going on around them. But we carry on with our adventure into France and we got to rescue this downed pilot or glider pilot, I guess. And the whole point of this mission is to meet up with the French resistance and well, we must carry on and we've got to blow something up. There's a marquee safe house right near here. It's over that way. One thing you need to remember when coming in and playing this game is while the AI with you can actually kill people, they're also really stupid at the same time and will just stand there and die, which will cause you to fail the mission. So protect them, don't just rely on them, and keep an eye out for those pesky bushwicky. Like it's really difficult just to see these Germans that are in these bushes and they're not really dense bushes. And yeah, it's really annoying, but it's something you got to deal with. It does happen throughout most of the levels in this game, unfortunately. The enemy AI, they just do have the same like hacks that these Call of Duty bedroom streamers have. So we smash into this church that we found because the resistance base is meant to be around this area. So we meet this French resistance member and this is the main character from the second Medal of Honor game, Medal of Honor Underground. And we continue on, so I decide to try and do this like a little bit stealthy, but we get instantly spotted and the stealth pistol, or the silence pistol really we should say, is a terrible weapon it's really inaccurate as you can see from from me trying to kill these guys it's as accurate as the smgs so the first shot or the shot you fire is not where you're aiming it will veer off quite drastically around the crosshair it's not worth using at all so we switch to the mp40 deal with these germans our objective is to blow up these train blocks Things and we escape on the truck. Not that much happened really in this mission. It was just sort of running through the bunker or spending a long time running down the train tracks. It's better off if we just sort of skip over it, really. So, again, like the very first level of the game, we're really visible in this truck, but the Germans just, you know, they just don't seem to care. You know, I don't think the developers really thought of it. I mean, you're not really disguised as anything but hey yo it's fine because we get a shotgun and the shotgun in this game is really nice to use the pellet spread is really large like it could take up an entire wall with its pellet spread we try stealth again but yeah the pistol is just so bad so whip out the shotgun we're going through a house yeah we've got to blow people apart but you know i do like the smgs a bit if you're like eagle-eyed here you can see how much spread the pellets are but like going with this shotgun blast especially on this back wall it does make the shotgun feel a bit inconsistent but yeah up close it's a blast and on this section of the mission we need to go through three different buildings i think it's three different buildings to complete a few different objectives we need to find these documents on the table we need to get some explosives, which we've already got. And I kind of like this because while it's just a bunch of different buildings you need to go through, at least it's given you a little bit of freedom. And with a game this far back, I, you know, I can't quite remember if games were very corridor focused during this time. I'm pretty sure they were because, you know, the Call of Duties, which came out after this, are heavily corridor focused. But some games do excel in corridor focused like environments especially i say this game because the close quarters fighting is really good but we are heading now to the end of the level and unfortunately we got some bs to contend with so we took out that machine gunner 
And these guys you see in here will infinitely respawn. And they respawn really quickly. And moving forward, you've again got some super accurate German riflemen just hiding in the bushes up ahead. It's an unfortunate end to this mission. I mean, the mission was all right. It did have some low points, did have some higher points. But this moment, as you can see, these guys have already respawned in. And yes, the dogs do keep coming as well. I just made it to the end of the level where you have to meet your resistance contact again. And another dog turned up and killed me. But we do you know, fight our way back through. Make sure we don't get killed this time and finish the level. Now, on to the next mission, and immediately from this one, I get Saving Private Ryan vibes from the moment where they go into the rainy town where Capazzo, who's played by Vin Diesel, gets killed by a sniper. And it's because this town yeah, just reminds me of that town, but also because there's so many snipers and riflemen just hidden around throughout the level in really dark corners or dark windows. And because of that, it's the worst mission so far into the game if they would have toned it down a bit and have you know less snipers but more general infantry just around the ruins of this village it would be just a much better level there's too many snipers and yeah they're hiding at the very edge of the map there's someone shooting at me who's on the top of the house you can only just see his helmet they're hidden in so many little places it was a really annoying and frustrating experience but once you make it through that section of village you meet up with these two pillocks and i call them pillocks because you need to escort these two to a king tiger tank on the opposite side of the town because all three of you are gonna drive it gun it the next mission or not the next mission but the next section of the mission and unlike all the other AI that you've had with you in the game so far, these two just have no ability to kill any AI. So it's completely on you. Now this section, yeah, there's a tank. They don't have a bazooka, so they can't deal with it. So you need to take it out yourself, and that's fine. The tank is no problem at all to deal with. Again, I feel like it's a missed opportunity. They could have had a decent set piece around this tank but just nothing really happens it just drives forward a bit and you manage to blow it up and these two guys they have a habit of just standing out in the open while all the riflemen and snipers can just take them out there's enemies that can attack from multiple angles and yeah if you move forward a bit you can just hear gunshots going off in the distance onto your guys as they're getting shot and standing still and doing nothing about it and yeah the awareness of enemies and friendlies in the game is kind of bad already but for them just to sort of stand there and do nothing while getting shot at it's it's really frustrating because if one of them die it leads to a game over or you know you have to restart from your last checkpoint and that happened to me a couple of times you kind of need to take out all the enemies and quickly rush forward keep ahead of these guys so no one else can kill them because they are just really really stupid but we push forward and yes we find a king tiger tank that we need to use for the next part of the mission and the mission driving the king tiger it's it's kind of okay you can only use the main cannon there's no machine gun that you can use is a nice touch that a lot of the buildings do have this sort of predetermined destruction when you shoot at them. For a game this old, it's a nice little effect to have that, you know, considering the game's age. There's a lot of games nowadays that won't even go that far to have that small amount of destruction in it. There are no health pickups or repair mechanic in this section, so you do need to be pretty careful because you do come up against multiple tanks and infantry with anti-tank launchers. But it's a decent enough tank level, it's nothing outstanding, there's no major set piece for the tank level, you just keep on going, keep taking out infantry, keep destroying some buildings, destroy enemy tanks, and you get some half tracks to destroy as well. You do just need to be really careful, just because, like I said earlier, there are no health pickups, so I think they missed out on something there, just have a simple repair mechanic so you can just feel 
a bit more powerful and just go all out. But once you get a bit further into the village, you get forced out the tank to go on foot. What you need to do is work your way through the village a little bit to this section that overlooks a bridge because your tank squad needs assistance to get past this bridge. Even though you're in a tank and could have just done it yourself, there are explosives on the bridge that you need to make sure don't get detonated, which is what this sniping section is here. Thankfully though, this sniping section isn't the main focus of this small part of the level. You get binoculars which links up to some artillery and you need to call in artillery down on enemy tanks that attack your tank on the bridge. They do keep the destruction that was happening when you was actually using a tank because most of the buildings, as you can see, get destroyed. But I think this section goes on for a bit too long. There's a lot of tanks that keep coming into that exact point, either from the right or the left. They just keep coming and coming and coming. And all you need to do is just keep getting your binoculars out and clicking on the tanks. You do get attacked from some infantry every now and then. And then the last part is destroying this King Tiger with your King Tiger and your artillery hitting it at the same time. Once you take it out, that's the end of the mission. Now we're on the last mission of the game. And unfortunately, this starting point is kind of terrible. You're going through this snowy forest and there's a bunch of riflemen and snipers hidden around, but some of them are hidden right at the boundary of the map, like right up against the sort of flat textured forest, which is the boundary for the mission. It's not great, really, and it feels like a massive slog, especially for the last mission. I think they really should have done something a bit better than this. It doesn't play to the strengths of the game at all. You know, trying to run through this forest with enemies hiding in the fog and being able to shoot at you through the trees. But once you get through it, you infiltrate this small base and you do get treated to the opportunity, at least, to grab a uniform and try some of the traditional Medal of Honor stealth where you got to get your papers out and show your papers to everyone so you know you can actually sneak through unfortunately i'm a bit of an idiot and i didn't show my papers quick enough to this guy so my cover was blown immediately but deal with those guys because you do need to grab some level two papers so you can get further into the base there is this guy not this one the guy wearing black who blocks you from proceeding if you don't have the level two papers so grab the papers carry on because the point of this mission is to get into this base grab the stg 44 and blow the place up unfortunately i'm a bit of an idiot we grab the stg and then plant the charges but you need to escape out the way you came in but i tried to proceed further into the base and then i got stuck in the room and blew myself up there's a five second detonation time so plant the charges go back the way you just came into the room and that blows your cover straight away and now you need to fight your way out but thankfully you got the STG 44 and it probably is the best close quarters weapon in the game because it does have a high fire rate and it does pretty good damage and thankfully because you just raided a whole place of where the STG was you do have loads of ammo and you need it to uh to fight your way back out because I think maybe too many people get thrown at you at this point. There's so many guys to fight through. Yes, you've got the STG. You do have to keep turning off the alarms, but because there are so many alarms in this level, they just kept getting turned on all the time. So loads and loads more enemies just keep getting thrown your way. But again, thankfully, it is mainly a close quarters situation. You've got the STG, so it's a good combat experience because Medal of Honor, Allied Assault, the best combat is when you're in close quarters. And once you've escaped the base, you get sent to this, it's like an idyllic Swiss or Austrian village just suddenly out in the middle of nowhere. It almost reminded me of like a Christmas village. So you need to fight your way through this to carry on. And if you remember when I said a lot earlier in the game that the silence pistol was terrible, yeah, just 
just don't use the silenced pistol. Just just go in guns blazing. It's a lot better. One thing I liked about this part of the mission is that there's a lot of different ways to progress through this village. And there's quite a few like houses or buildings that you can just go into and explore. There's no real reason or objective to actually find or complete in these buildings. It's just something extra you can do, which is pretty good, to be honest. While corridor shooters do have their moments where they can properly script in some big set piece, giving the player that little bit of freedom, again, it's a nice little touch, especially for a game that's quite a bit older now. We go into this village, there's this little German encampment which you need to set some charges in to blow up. Now with that objective completed we just need to fight our way back through the village just a little bit more and at this point again they just throw a hell of a lot of infantry at you. I mean it is the last mission so it, it kind of does need to be a little bit of a challenge but again I think maybe they throw a bit too much at you because it can start to feel like a bit of a slog. They even spawn a lot more infantry. There's a little bit here where a guy just appears out of thin air right in front of me. Must have been something wrong with the uh, with the program in there. But again, having enemies spawn that close to you, it's it's not it's just not right to be honest. So it's through this window, the end of this section, and again we have another snowy forest section, just like the beginning of this mission. Luckily though, there aren't any enemy riflemen or snipers hiding at the edges of the map, but it is still just not a good section. And I've cut out most of this until we get to this little compound because we need to get in there to really jump through a window so we can carry on to the next section. I'm not sure how this sort of links to the next part of the mission. I wonder if something changed or went a bit iffy during the development and they just had to make a decision because we jump through this window and then suddenly you're on a train with some guys so it really feels like something was maybe cut out of the game at the last minute or they didn't have enough time to link jumping through the window with this section but you're assaulting the last place and you need to protect these rangers from the snipers in the tower now what i just did there straight away was gun two of them down <laughs> because I'm an idiot. And I think this section of the mission just went on for too long because it's just not the four guys you need to snipe. They keep respawning in far too often. And it is like timed or you have to kill a certain amount, but the game just doesn't tell you. Now we begin our fight towards the main objective, which is to blow up this plant. And I think this plant was in the first Medal of Honor game and it was blown up in that, but it wasn't fully blown up. So you need to carry on. But we had those two guys sent with us and um, I'm probably not the best team player here because I uh, blow both of them up. Rip those guys. And I've cut a chunk out of the mission from, uh, from what you're seeing now because it is just running along these tunnels for quite a while, finding the pipes, finding where to plant the explosives before getting into an elevator and getting to the last point. You do grab this gas mask a little bit early before jumping down in there because you've got to do some stuff with the fuel which causes a whole bunch of gas to come out and that's pretty much why you need the uh, need the gas mask really. But once the explosives have been put down, you need to get the hell out of there Halo style, like, like it's the end Warthog run but you're just running out on a timer. And again, I think they drop the ball a little bit here because everything starts exploding you've just got to run out if you stand still for too long the explosions do catch up to you and kill you and the game sends a bunch of enemies at you but those enemies are there with explosions going on and they have no sense of like self-preservation their only thing they can think about is killing you instead of trying to survive the explosion it's it's a bit strange like where were those guys running they were running towards you instead of running the direction you're going which is out of this exploding plant or factory and this is the very end of the game this is the last set piece and you know it's not a great set piece 
yes, it does have the close quarters combat, which works really well for Medal of Honor, but it kind of doesn't make sense. Why wouldn't these guys be wanting to survive? I mean, they can't exactly stop everything from exploding. The only thing they can do is stop you, but if they ran out and then waited for you to get out, if you survived, then they can just take your prisoner or kill you, you know? But we make it out. I did actually die when I first exited the area because there's these guys in front of you. There's a guy in the tower to your left that you need to take out. And there's another couple of guys hiding on top of this structure above the trains. It's quite of a frantic bit because there's no cover really for you to hide behind. Again, I think it's a bit of a, a misstep or like a drop by the devs. There's even this guy hiding behind the chain link fence, which is pretty difficult to see. But once you've done that, you jump into the train to essentially finish your last objective and to complete the game. the end and it just rolls credits that's that's it that's that's the ending for for the game the end credits now i was really disappointed with this i don't know what i expected at least something or at least like a a hint of what's to come next but it it's literally just the end roll credits so i think it's safe to say that Certain aspects of Allied Assault just haven't aged too well. However, it was still pretty fun to play through, and I would recommend getting it. You can play it through Game Pass if you've got that on PC. Um, there's the EA Store, which just never worked for me, so I ended up getting it through good old games. But you're probably asking, based on what you've just seen, how did this game change gaming history? Well, let's just go back a little bit to when Spielberg was looking for a developer to actually create this game. First, he actually went to id Software, the creators of Doom, Quake, Wolfenstein. But they weren't able to create the game because they were just too busy. So they recommended 2015 Inc, who would actually go on to develop the game. But I can't actually find out anywhere why they recommended 2015 Inc. But it set a number of individuals on a collision course with history. So 2015 developed Allied Assault with a core team of 22 developers. The game released to a critical and commercial success. So for EA, Granddaddy EA, who we all know and kind of hate, logically for them, they would take this studio and develop a sequel or maybe acquire the studio to develop more sequels. But they didn't. The core 22 devs would leave 2015 Inc. and create their own studio. 2015 did start developing their own IP after Allied Assault called Men of Valor, which was a Vietnam-based first-person shooter. And maybe this was why the 22 developers left. Maybe they just wanted to carry on making a World War II-based shooter. And the game that they would end up releasing, which would be in 2003, would win several Game of the Year awards. It would spawn a franchise that had a total of 19 main series releases, some console exclusive titles, handheld titles, mobile titles, and some free to play titles. This studio is named Infinity Ward and the game was Call of Duty. One of, if not the biggest gaming franchise of all time. And many games since Call of Duty have been developed to try and emulate what Call of Duty does, to try and you know copy it, to try and earn some of that audience away from Call of Duty to its own games. Some games have changed what they were to be more like Call of Duty. What would have happened if id Software would have not recommended 2015 Inc. and developed the game themselves? What if they recommended someone else? Would Call of Duty exist today? Would many other games have even exist today because Call of Duty wouldn't have? There's another big story with the main founders of Infinity Ward because they ended up leaving or getting fired from Infinity Ward to then found another studio called Respawn Entertainment who would then go on to create Titanfall, Apex Legends, Jedi Fallen Order and they would actually go back to revisit Medal of Honor with the VR title above and beyond. And that's why Medal of Honor Allied Assault changed gaming forever. It 
gave the core developers like something it kickstarted something within them that made them go and create their own studio and then end up developing call of duty which then just exploded and it's taken over everything really so i hope you've enjoyed this trip down memory lane let me know what you think of allied assault and medal of honor down in the comments below this channel is changing from the sort of guides and gameplay it used to make to uh, make these longer videos looking back at other games or more recent games to see how well they've done how impactful they've been so subscribe if you're into that sort of content give this video a like if you liked it dislike if you didn't and uh thank you for watching